Weekly stock market update, everyone. Get ready, get excited, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and all the rest of it. So let's kick off straight away. We have got a heck of a lot to cover in all of this. So pens ready. Now, first things first, I'll make myself a bit smaller. You don't need me so big. This is the valuations. They're still red across the board, but of course, valuation is not necessarily the best determinant or the only determinant of stock price movements which is why the ones in red are the ones which are going up even though they're overvalued and the ones in green are the ones which haven't actually done anything fantastic uh, despite being undervalued that's why we look at more things than just valuation alone of course uh, the main things that i want you to look out for in the week ahead in earnings are going to be keep an eye out for Autodesk. That could be market, uh, uh, I don't know, setting the pace for the market, let's put it that way. Uh, Dollar Tree as well. Now, when we look at the various sectors, what we see, if we put a mark there on the zero line, there are some sectors where if you have the opportunity to find undervalued high growth companies, and we'll look at some of them in a second, then you want to get them in those sectors like utilities. If you find them in real estate, well, at the moment, forget about it. Okay, basic materials also, largely most of the companies are in the green and with something called communication services, which includes everything from Meta to Alphabet. You thought they were technology companies, apparently not. The technology companies are also largely positive as well so the financials consumer cyclicals not so much even though i own amazon i'll come to some more of those but energy definitely you like industrials pretty much as well healthcare as well and consumer staples it's really real estate which stinks uh, we're going to go through some of those individual stocks in just a second but let's have a look at the way in which I do select these things and essentially it is I need the value box tick the growth the income box ticked as well as well as cash return on capital invested momentum because stocks with momentum tend to persist in the same direction nothing's guaranteed in the markets Sortino and Alpha which ensures that they bubble ahead. They have quite a bit of buoyancy without too much downside risk and are elevated uh, in outperforming the market. Again, nothing's ever guaranteed, sadly, in the markets. How's the past week been? It's pretty much a stank, except for NVIDIA, really. Everything else has been pretty mediocre, and we'll deep dive into some of these. Feel free to pause at any moment during any of this. I'll cover some of the leveraged ETFs. I continue owning two times leverage Amazon uh, on there. Uh, these are some of the exchange traded funds. This is not the video for the exchange traded funds kind of stuff. I will do that in future, so make sure you do all of those things. Uh, now, year to date, where are we? NASDAQ up 8%, SP uh, doing nicely as well. But notice how markets move. Now, I really want to teach you this because people don't get it. Look at from the start of the year where they went up. And then you pretty much lost all your gains and then they went to all time highs again. That move is quite common. The point being that you'll get prolonged periods of 0% returns. Okay, you will get periods where you lose all your gains and yet you end up with an all time high. It is not linear. All right, so remember that. Okay, this will help, especially if you monitor these periods draw down depth and durations it will really help you manage your expectations and fears uh, which are the sectors doing the best as i said utilities communications financials energy tech industrials as well i don't take bets on sectors i look at companies so i'm very much bottom up not top down okay the factors which have been doing well momentum Momentum has been doing incredibly well, which is one of the reasons why we must have strong momentum when we're looking at stocks. We need all of these things to be green, these first five columns, in order to outperform. We don't leave out valuable information such as, does it tick the momentum box? Does it tick the value box? Does it tick the volatility box? And only then, when it ticks all those boxes, because we don't gamble on which one of these are going to win, 
Okay, we don't gamble and feed you stories and narratives. Instead, we look at the data and say, does it tick all the boxes instead? And that's critical. Okay, so that's the way in which we do it. Uh, and that's important for the success that we have. Now, let's have a look at the markets over the past year. NASDAQ up 29%, 30% from June the 1st last year to June the 1st this year. The NASDAQ's up 30%. Okay, but look at how it did it, right? You went from June to November, almost six months, so for five months, you had a 0% return. After thinking, you were off to the races and making lots of money. It is that pattern again. That pattern again. Great gains, pull back all the way to zero, makes you lose the will to live. That's when all the weak people get out, and so then it shoots up. Time and time again, you will see that pattern happen. And it happens in different time frames. It can happen over months. It can happen over shorter periods like weeks. Okay. Uh, FTSE 350, these are the price changes over the past month. And I'll do separate videos on the FTSE. That's why you've got to make sure you do all of those things uh, as well. Now, going back to the SP 500, where are we? Well, the monthly momentum is up, so I'm positive. However, there seems to be another baby bear market. What's a baby bear market? Well, it's where the weekly MACD falls. It's kissing its own moving average and then falling, which often happens. So that's the weekly momentum. Uh, it's falling, but the monthly is rising. That's called a baby bear. And you can mainly ignore babies. Now, the danger is babies become mamas. What are mamas? Mamas are where the weekly is falling and the monthly is falling but it hasn't crossed its own moving average. That's a mama. And mums can tran can become daddies. Now with mamas, you might sell some of your holdings, take a bit of profit, uh, uh, ease back on your, uh, on your portfolio. Uh, the transition to daddy, you definitely want to be holding cash. That's where the monthly falls below its own moving average. And of course, yet again, the weekly is falling. Okay, so at the moment, we have a bit of a baby bear. Now that I've taught you that, we're going to show you how to keep your calm now, you can see the gradient on the momentum on the FTSE 100 is up, uh, hasn't run out of steam. I actually thought it would because it usually does, but it hasn't, seems to be okay for now. The NASDAQ, similar to previously going up, but just watch out for that drawdown depth and duration, that box. So that'll manage your expectations because you may well expect it only to go up. It doesn't, it has periods. <clears throat> indeed like this where it had a mama bear because that was falling it wasn't daddy it was mama bear okay <coughs> and if you think it's a bit immature of me to mention mama daddy and baby bears remember the goldilocks scenario is what the um, central bankers would often talk about okay so it's not something which should uh, seem immature two times leverage microsoft that's where that is uh okay so that's that. Won't go into these on here. Uh, I'm going to save that for the Great Investments Program. Top 10 S&P 500 stocks over the past month are these. Let's look at some of those and see if they look interesting. Uh, that's value growth a rating meets mine, but bit overbought, not one for me. Also not one for me because whilst it meets my value growth income, it's overbought, so it's not for me. You might be more risk loving. Good luck to you. Moderna doesn't meet my value growth income, even though the momentum looks good. So not one which I would buy now if you continue holding it. You know my rules for exit and selling, which are 12 months or 25% drop from the peak. HP, not one I'd buy now because that looks good, but it doesn't meet my value growth income. Deckers, not one for me because it's overbought and doesn't meet my value growth income. Nvidia, I'm afraid you know the rules. If it drops X, sell Y. I wouldn't buy now because it's overbought, but if you do, remember the rule. If it drops X, sell Y based on your risk appetite. Meets my value growth income, but overbought, so not for me. Qualcomm, I continue holding. I wouldn't buy now because it doesn't meet my value growth income. And if it drops X, I'll sell Y. Well, that answers those. Costco, doesn't meet value growth income and overbought worryingly okay well there we go bank of america 
doesn't meet value growth income but that looks okay so not one for me i'm going to leave it at that for this week thank you very much